Hello and welcome to another episode of Literary Gladiators, the show where we discuss the make literature in all of its forms. If it's written work, it's gay. Like racquetball. Let's meet the panel. I'm Larry. I'm Jesse. I'm Hung Charlie. And I'm Josh. And Charlie, I'm thinking that you're pleased that you uh, are not playing racquetball with a toilet brush. <laughs> and actually, no, I'm disappointed. Highly, highly disappointed. But we're going to be going over the, uh, we're going over Sun Creation today, which is a Brule Sioux uh, legend uh, that was told by Leonard Crowdog back in 1981. B.C., before Charlie. No, not B.C. It was A. <laughs> no, I was before Charlie. 37 years ago. <laughs> yes, no, before Charlie. <laughs> Now I'm confused again. Already, uh, Larry, you have a discussion starter? Yes, I do. I thought that I would ask uh, you guys what do you think we can learn about the values of the Sioux through this particular myth? They have a great sense of pride for their, uh, for the, uh, the, uh, the tribal, uh, the, the American, the, you can't really call them Indians because, according to them, uh, they're birth people. Mm. And so, <clears throat> I right. think that they have a great sense of individual value and how they, uh, how the way that the sun uh, had led a creation among all the other beings and eons how it's, it's, it's a deity, okay. to create the uh, to create Earth. Uh, and the uh, importance that they had is a, uh, it's an interesting, uh, where did we come from? And I would tell. No, no, I, I, I like that. And also, <clears throat> all Indian tribes, for that matter, they always have very, very, um, the, the earth is very sacred, the ground, and everything, the sun, especially, uh, the sun, what does the sun do in the first place? The sun, not only does it give us light, not only does it give us warmth and heat and whatnot, but it's also, it's, I'm going to say, very bright, because if you look at it, you'll go blind. Trust me, don't do that. I lost a, I've lost a bet, all right? <laughs> oh, but the sun is also centered in the middle of the universe, center of the solar system. And that, that can be very symbolic. And, but, and the way they treat the earth as well. You don't see Indians taking their tobacco pipes and throwing it on the ground or... You don't. You don't see no. them littering. The way that the most uh, they were many the tribes, sacred. it's they whatever they take, they have a prayer for. Yes. Thanking nature for mm -hmm. allowing them to take what they needed yeah. in order to survive. You don't see them going to Walmart and buying a bunch of stuff that they're going to use and not just then throw away. They Already. very you know that's what I wanted to say. Very reserved, loving people. I yeah. I think it shows that they were pretty, um, you know, aware that they weren't around for as long as um, the sun was. And I think, I mean, when you kind of look at it from a perspective of, okay, the sun is billions of years old and has been around forever, and obviously not as long as humans, but when you look at other cultures and their creation stories, um, it, it's like, okay, the sun, and then God created people, and we've been around as long as Earth and the human and the sun and everything like that. So I, I felt like reading through it as they were saying, you know, sun eons, um, was it sun eons? You know, the, the yeah. creation yeah, eons, whatever eons, it was. Thousands of eons, so they're, thousands. yeah, they're talking about how it took so long for the things that they have around them to be created. It wasn't just like, um, for example, in Christian, you know, uh, in Genesis, where it was like, and there it was, and there it was, and there it was, and the earth in seven days, and the universe in seven days. Well, so. six. I took an astronomy class uh, back in college uh, about seven years ago. I. Uh, the interesting thing about that is, uh, they, if you measure the, the length in which the universe was around in, with a calendar, humanity was only around for the last two minutes of New Year's Eve. Mm -hmm. uh, we, I, did the, uh, I, I think I took the same astronomy class because we learned it just the same now. You mm -hmm. know, the beginning of the universe is January 1st, 1201, and then, you know, the end of 
Halloween versus, you know, like you said, New Year's Eve at 11.59. We've only been around since 11.57. Mm -hmm. And we're really not that, not that old. And I, I think it was just very interesting that you can learn through this creation story that they kind of knew that. Well, without like this is 1981 that this story came out. Yeah, that's when it when it came to his attention. He no. recalled it. He recalled it from a vision quest. Mm -hmm. And so he, he went up tripping. <laughs> yeah. Right. So you know, he went to a sweat lodge or whatever. It took I don't know what their ritual is, but among many of the natives, there's a ritual of taking some kind of hallucination. Mm on a vision quest and then you go out and, and you experience hallucinations so mm -hmm. you know how old is this story 37 years old yeah See, I it thought, I it thought would be 38 by the time this uh, episode is up no, <laughs> <laughs> no but I, I've actually thought it was like older than that and he it was just finally being published um, so, all right, so then I guess that changes my viewpoint a little bit. A lot of the stories I mean, are, uh, it depends on how he recalled it, too. I think from what he's saying, it was very current. So that would be a I don't, A lot of this is all passed down. It's, I don't, I, now, I, when I'm wrong, I'll admit it, but a, a lot of this is, from what I remember hearing and being told, a lot of it is recited. It's like oral history. It's like being, you're being told this, and then, you know, you had, and then you just, it's like you remember it. It's like indoctrinated yeah. in your head. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was a story being passed down, and then they yeah. had put it into a book. I didn't realize that it was something that he had just recently uh, envisioned yeah. on a quest. I mm -hmm. thought it was like, you know. Yeah, I think it's a, com it's a combination. Oh, okay. Yeah, oh, see, so I think I missed that part. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of it's not tales, or a little bit of that. Mm -hmm. Fairy tales, book tales, legends. Yeah. yeah. Most inter I think the one thing that grabbed me when it came to this piece uh, in particular was the uh, uh, very first, uh, the, uh, the whole uh, idea of how he particularly was uh, tugging at or poking at the, uh, the white man and how he said that some people say we are descended from Adam and Eve but there was no Adam or Eve in our creation. Some people try to tell us that we were born with the burden of original sin, but that is an alien white man's concept. Sin was not in the mind of the universe, of our creators or the created. I think he's really taking a naturalist approach to this, even though he personifies the thoughts and actions of the sun and other planets. So it's interesting uh, well, yeah, I mean, it's, I guess, thinking, right, he's yeah. looking at it as kind of like the, what is it, the tabula rasa, right, people are blind slate, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, that there's, there's no blame for, for whatever, but whatever, I don't know, I don't know what to take away from that, mm -hmm. other than, you know. Well, the sun has always been revered, and, 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 and almost every, even in Christianity, the sun is revered, and all religions, to the sun, there is always some kind of, the first, like, let's say Christianity, for example, let there be light. The sun is a source of yes, light. That's the first words in the book of Genesis. Yeah. You know, and not only did God just push a button, metaphorically speaking, metaphorically, he said, let there be light, he, and there was light, and he saw, yeah. I'm One thing that I read that was interesting, though, is uh, the way that, usually, in many cases, the sun is seen as male and the moon is seen as female. Yeah. And there, there's other Indian tribes that see the flip. Really? They see the sun as female and the moon as male, or are they they have different approaches to. I think what it gender. comes down to is that all um, you know cultures, mm -hmm. no matter where we stem from or you know mm -hmm. what our past is, we all recognize that you know the sun is important, whether it's mm -hmm. God or light or whatever. You know, it's something Blinding that we look need at for, to to survive, yeah. and I think mm -hmm. that's you know. Ultimately, I guess why this story is, you know, just so centered yeah. around the sun is because we wouldn't be here without it. Mm -hmm. I, I guess it's yeah. just the best way to explain it. And one, one other thing I wanted to go off uh, real quick is um, being the 
music is also something I hold near and dear to my heart. Um, there's an, uh, he's a Brit, uh, Irish composer, music, uh, Bill Whalen, Bill Whalen, I can't talk, um, but he has a piece for, for river dance, the Irish step dancing, river dance, one of the small oh, flat things. Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm saying the composer. Um, mm -hmm. The, you know, they kick off the show with reel around the sun, and it's a whole eight minute, very moving. It really is, especially with, just with even without the dancing, the music itself is very moving, and I play it all the time. But even then, they have a very strong hold with the sun and whatnot. So, mm -hmm. musically speaking. Yeah, so it's like stories, music, culture, everything, you know, kind of started, you know, with the one thing that our ancestors, you know, recognized as it's a constant. Yeah, it was, it, it was a constant. It was their survival. It's what they needed. And, you know, it only makes sense to have some uh, our creation start with the sun. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most definitely. I think we have sun is the center of our universe. Yes. Yeah, yeah our, yes. Do we have any uh, final thoughts? Ah, uh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like it. Blindingly like beautiful. Right. I think that these myths and legends are very uh, enlightening. I think that it's very uh, important and intriguing to and you learn from them. explore so many other cultures based off of their tales or myths or legends of this nature. Yeah, I agree. I think it's it's gives you kind of an insight of how other people view the world mm -hmm. around you or around them. And this book goes over so many uh, different uh, tribes. And, uh, it, it uncovers so many different groups of people. It was interesting that the blood clot was back. Mm. Yeah, there was a. They also had their uh, exploration. They had their uh, view of a uh, blood clot man. Yeah, but there's I think different tribes that see the blood clot in uh, various ways. Even if it, there's some of them are slightly similar, uh, it is quite interesting the connections between them. When I was really little, I hit my eye. Oh, wait, I'm not going down that road. I saw a blood clot, but I thought there's, yeah. You want to say something, Larry? Don't tell me that. No, I had nothing else. Okay. I, I just thought that that was interesting because, you know, so far Huge. we've read two, I've read two of these for the show, mm. and both of them had. Uh, you know, something about the blood clot man in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is uh, quite. And even the ones that were, I read another one that featured, uh, it was actually, no, it featured uh, a rabbit boy. That was the, I went over rabbit boy in another discussion. But this is definitely a great collection to check out. Uh, American Indian myths and legends. Uh, I definitely plan to explore. You know, make a very sad attempt. At I'd people. like to go over the whole thing on, on a single attempt, but that could be a challenge sometimes. It'll take eons. But <laughs> dipping in and out is also uh, a great thing. Yeah, it would be good to have an expert. We should try to. That would be quite something to. I'm sure think there's it's, uh, somebody around because you know Pine Barrens being not too far away, there has to be an expert on something. I know. Some things Doctor Esposito has interviewed. Uh, somebody from uh, a tribe. Uh, he's since passed away, but uh, would be, it would definitely be interesting to have Why, son? Uh, from that background, or is that American? is into Native American literature. Mm -hmm. There's so much that can be. And son, you know, is also associated with giving life. You know, and obviously, you know, this is most commonly known. The sun usually not only does it give life, sustained life, but also, you know, they say the, the moon and, the, you know, the, the, the end of the day, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of, you know, the end of life. I don't, I'm not going into that, but really that, you know, but really interesting. I'll leave a link down below to this. Uh, yeah, by link? Yep, I'll leave a link down below so that people can check it out. But be sure to join us next time for another episode of Literary Gladiators. For now, keep reading.